Oh, right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Florencio Files, where sewer strategies meet the ladder. That's right. The purveyor of all sewer strategies, the man who, of course, is an expert in excrement. An expert in excrement, an expert excrementer. This down here is Florencio. And back to his filthy ways, he's on a barcode account. Very nice. So, of course, we have uh, the barcode virgin Protoss, Florencio. And the barcode virgin Tarrant at the bottom right. A battle of the anonymous. Two ghosts. Two invisible brethren facing off in combat here. And I can't wait to see how it goes. Down here in the bottom right, of course, he's going Barracks Gas and Florencio. Already doing a proxy by the looks of it. This little probe here is having a bit of a hidey hide. Thinking about coming on in over here. Back at home, we got that forge goes up. Another probe. Yeah, it's classic cannon rush. All right, he's going to try and throw some cannons up here real nice. And look, he's like, oh, it's just a normal probe. I'm just coming in to scout your base. That's all. Of course, our barcode Terran player does not realize that it threw that pylon down. The second pylon or probe, sorry, we'll be able to kind of capitalize on that. But oh, he's going to scout. He's going to scout. He should be able to shut this down if he pulls a lot of SCVs. But he'll have to do it very quick. Does he realize? Might still be distracted by this probe running circles around the main base. You can see that's being queued up by Florencio to lead that SCV on a merry chase. That SCV says, come here and let me drill you, boy. Let me drill you. What the f Oh, WTF is this shoot. I, I agree. What is this shoot? A gateway, two cannons, and a pylon walling it in. SCVs are pulled. They're going to try and clean up this probe, but he's already got the spotting pylon on the high ground. That's going to be really hard to shut down here for our Barco Terran player. We're just going to call him Terran, by the way, guys. I feel like this is the true spirit of Terran. I mean, for who is nameless but a Terran who is already mad at their Protoss opponent, trying to cheese them out of the ladder. The spirit of Terran here. Two SCVs still frantically chasing after him. The bunker goes up in a very conservative position. Just going to get ramp control. Factory goes down, and unfortunately, this probe is going to beat its end. It does go down. Two drills. Too much for that probe. Couldn't handle it. Bit too girthy. One SCV has fallen, so it's been equal trade so far, and it looks like a chrono into the probes. The double gas behind this. I think we might see a Cybercore up here soon as well. Florencio is going to lose that pylon. He took out the depot, but he's not in range of anything else. I'm surprised he didn't commit to more cannons, because if you think about it, he could have actually built three or four cannons more pylons. There was only one Marine out this whole time, so he's actually, I think, let the Terran get, get away with it. But the Terran did pull a lot of SCVs, so that probably leads into that decision. Cybercore goes down at home. Another Chrono on the probes behind this. Flow will be getting up a full base of workers, but Factory with Attack Lab means Tanks or Cyclone is going to be able to outrange and clear this up and building Marines two at a time. Of course, no Command Center, no Nexus for either side. So we've already managed to take this game, which you might have think, you know, you, you queue into ladder, you go Blackburn, TVP, we're taking the scenic route, going to go along the lake on the train, look out the window, there's going to be fields, meadows filled with butterflies and sunshine. And then, um, yeah, you, you kind of like, oh, yeah, just a quick tunnel under this hill. And you go into the tunnel, and then it's just everything goes black. And then it swaps to, like, shades of weird purple and green and kind of, like, dark, misty. There's For some reason, there's, like, smoke and mist coming up out the windows. Next thing you know, you're in a subterranean cavern. And there is literally, it's like, you know, it's, it's like the chocolate, the chocolate river in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Let's just say it's not necessarily chocolate, is it? I, I have a feeling it might not be that. It might be something a little bit less tasty. Uh, you can already smell it starting to permeate the train carriage. And I think it's at this point as a Terran player who's already a little bit mad. You've already stood up and said, Excuse me? What the F is this shoot? Where are we going? Where is this train taking me? But the conductor just smiles at him, nods, and doesn't actually react. Little does the spirit of Terran realize that I think he might be on the train to D-Town. That's right. I think he might be on the way there. Now, whether Florencio could take him all the way to the destination and conduct him there is yet to be seen, but going to depower this gateway in the near future. Stalker. Ooh, getting locked on. Got to be careful. But he's got another pile on there. If he can get this sentry out, then he could force field the ramp to keep him contained. That would be super cool. Stargate is now up at the four and a half minute mark. Super duper late, but it is going to get there. He's going to try and take down this gateway. The sentry is out. Nice scan, though. He knows about the sentry. And double Viking. More cyclones, more marines. This is a pretty damn good setup. He sees the Stargate as well. And there's a probe over here for Florencio. So in case a drop leaves to the left, he's got a very good chance of spotting it with this probe. Hey. You can tell he's set this up really nicely. All right, Stalkers. 
not going to get out of the gateway. So just one Zealot, one Stalker, one Sentry, and a Void Ray on the way. We are locked in a one base war. Oh, Force Field! Oh, what you could do is if you can trap those Cyclones on the low ground, the Zealot and the Stalker might be able to kill them. I don't know if you have enough damage, though. If they've used their lock on the Pylon, you can. But otherwise, it's going to be tricky. Oh, we got a Fleet Bacon going down at home. Heck yeah. All right, so he's going to go for the Tempest. Could tell you, we've got a tank coming out, which is going to try and range from the high ground, start clearing these cannons, which you can see they're far enough back that the Cyclones need to come down the ramp to get at them. So I actually love this position because it's really hard to siege from the high ground. I'm not even sure if a tank from here or here will reach it. And if you go down there, he could force field you at the bottom of the ramp and then the void rays can just tear you apart. So how do you get down this ramp is the big question. And the Spirit of Terran clearly playing cautiously, just massing Vikings, Cyclones, tanks, Marines. Not a single Tempest out just yet, but how do you actually clear through this? Ooh, the Vikings kind of baiting there. Very nice. Cyclones going to go forward as well. Oh, oh, the Void Ray comes forward. Not a good move. The Cyclone lock on. Only one Cyclone locked on. You need to manually lock on if you want more than one Cyclone to lock on a unit. It's going to go for the Snipe. Goes for it. Gets the Viking. Can it get out of there, though? Nah, -uh. great triple lock. Void Ray for a Viking. That's a good trade for the Terran. Spirit of Terran is at 69 supply versus 33. I mean, by all rights, Florencio should be dead right now. Second command center does go down. The unit's going to move down. He's going to push, but the cannons are in range. Three shield batteries and three cannons fighting. The tank is getting taken down by that cannon. Will it go down? The tank survives. The tank just barely surviving. The sentry and the stalker could finish it off right now. The stalker will go forward and take it out. There's still a cannon up. Another cannon there and one more cannon about to finish. And that Tempest getting some shots off as well. A few of these units go down. Double force field. A bit of panic there from Florencio trying to maintain this position. He's going to rebuild the cannons and batteries, but overall, that whittled down a lot of the Terran units. What did he lose, guys? He'd already lost the Void Ray, so he lost a Zealot and a few cannons. Kills Vikings, Cyclones, tanks, and a Marine. Ooh, and now the Tempest coming out as well. Gets a Viking, damages a Cyclone. The tank looking super exposed there. Florencio is having an absolute ball right now. That tank's going to get out of there, and it looks like it should escape. Still has Command Center coming up. Terran player does not have stim or anything like that that would scale to the point where he could just like stim 20, 30 marines down and clear this all up. It's all still very technical units, but the power of the cannons and the batteries, they're very sustained damage and healing. So this is one of those situations where you're like, I should be so far ahead, but just how do you actually crack out and break it? And I think the answer is you don't. I think you've got to go hit the economy, maybe land a Viking. But Terran is so focused on surviving the spirit of Terran right now. And he's just, and this is so irritating. So Florencio has set up this multi-layered contain now. And what, are you going to float a command center there? No way. Look at that. He even anticipates it. He's like, you know what? I saw the command center building. Let's make sure he can't even float that down. <laughs> oh, you dickhead, Florencio. I, I want to watch this from Spirit of Terran's point of view. All right, we're on Spirit of Terran's view. Let's, let's see. He sees a pylon and a stalker. And he's like, nope. Okay, we'll turn around. We'll go back up there. Fine. You dickhead. He's going to try and move a tank to the edge to clear that up. More Vikings, Magfield on the way. He's going to try and build a third command center here. Not, not a bad idea to get more economy up, but you're going to have to secure somewhere else to mine from as well, and that's going to be difficult. Spirit of Terran right now is going, what the hell is this? The conductor still just staring eerily, and it almost feels like the gaze of him. He's not really locking eyes with the Spirit of Terran. I feel like the, the, the Florencio conductor here is just kind of glaring, looking right through him, you know? that uneasy thing when you're talking to someone and you're not even sure if they can see you you guys ever talk to someone who's like taking way too many drugs or alcohol and their eyes are like kind of glazed over yeah it's kind of like that except of course he is high not from any standard paraphernalia or, or drugs or you know substances it's it's more the fact that he's obviously been snorting a few of those tears let's be real if you see a sewer mermaid out there you're out maybe on mardi gras one night one of the few nights when he does come out of the sewers and uh, you might just see a guy pull out a vial and kind of go... <clears throat> and, and that's actually him inhaling some of the fumes of the tears of his victims. So that is kind of what gets him a little bit giddy, makes his eyes glaze over a little bit. He gets a little bit wobbly, a little bit wiggly and jiggly. Does make Florencio get a, a little bit excited, as some would say. But uh, right now, I don't think things are looking good for him, guys. Yeah, five Tempests is annoying, but that's nine Vikings. Nine Vikings, three Cyclones with Magfield will make shh, like they'll destroy this. They'll make quick work of it. That he has to bait the Terran over the cannons. Florencio using Revelation now. That's going to give him a big range advantage because now he can use that anti-air range. See? Look how far those Tempests can shoot from if they've got that vision really nicely done. Almost gets a Viking. Now he's attacking that command center. 
And he's taking a corner base right now. Not probing at all. He's still on 24 probes. 10 minutes into this game. Florencio is like, I will do this off one base of workers. No more. This is just a transition nexus. That's all it's for, man. Building another pile on there now that the tank's being cleared up. He did manage to take that one out. The Vikings are coming. Run, 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 run. Oh, no, Florencio. He does take out a Cyclone. And another Cyclone goes down for free. That was really nice, actually, for him. Oh, these Vikings taking some shots. The Oracle will pull back. The Tempest doing a lot of damage. He gets another Viking there. You can see the units lost have started to stack up in Florencio's favor. And this base is almost mined out. Oh, the Spirit of Terran is going to need to do it, guys. Spirit of Terran needs to break free. He's, he's running out of mining. He needs to start floating these command centers out across the map. I don't think Florencio can really hunt a command center down. He can't really split his units. But at the same time, if you engage into eight photon cannons with four shield batteries, you are 100% going to lose the game. None of this deals with mass photon cannon. Uh, so I think, honestly, Spirit of Terran's in a, caught between a rock and a hard place is going to have to find a way out of this base, but I just hasn't been able to do it yet. The Tempest are just chipping away. The Oracles are there. Florencio has taken both gases and has still not built a single probe for his expansion. He's building probes here in his main still. Intelligent macro. He's like, yeah, man. Well, if you build probes in two bases, that's just inefficient because you've got to spread the production. You know, you don't want to spread the production. And I'm like, really? What? Why not? Oh, he's going to see the Vikings. Oh, okay. Okay. The Viking's going to go across the map. The Stalker's going to try and do some damage to them. He's going to start dropping mules here. Spirit of Terran trying to defend just with Marines at home. But the Tempests, I mean, dude, these are unupgraded Marines. These Tempests just laugh at those. They are going to come in and tear him apart. The Vikings come in. Spirit of Terran finally going to rain down justice on Florencio's only mining base. And he's already left. <laughs> I should have known it. Uh, I should have. I'm like, wait, where'd they go? Yeah, he recalled all but two probes. Yeah, he'll, he'll lose the cyber core and the fleet beacon, but he's already fully mining in the top right. And meanwhile, the Terran's going to lose his main base and all of his infrastructure. The Tempest chipping away. That command center is so close to dead. Cyclone's going to come forward. If that Cyclone gets a lock, it could do massive damage. The Marines are tanking right now. Florencio. Okay, he gets it. Nicely done. Takes a little bit of damage on the Tempest, but not too bad. And that Oracle has been doing a great job of revelating. Loses all of his buildings at home. He's rebuilding a Stargate up there in the top right of the map. The Tempests are getting jumped on a little bit, but not a single one going down. He's up to seven Tempests with number eight on the way. Oh my god. Dude, this is... I, I feel like right now, the spirit of Terran, the pride of Terran even, is, is feeling what it feels like to be in a fist fight with someone who's like nine foot tall. And their arms are literally three times longer than yours. You're just getting punched from miles away. Your units can't close the distance. The Vikings, though, are going to sprint forward. They're going to try and tackle these Tempests. If they can bring them down to the ground, maybe they can do it some work. They get one Tempest there. They don't want to chase, though. That was an interesting revelation there for Florencio. He did miss the Vikings by half a screen. I think he was using uh, refraction. So for those who don't know, the science of refraction. So hunting Vikings, um, Florencio teaches us in his science school, it's a lot like trying to hunt fish. So if you ever, if you guys have ever been spear fishing, what you realize is that because of the refraction of the water, you don't want to aim at where the fish is, you want to aim off to the side of it. And it's the exact same thing with Vikings because of the uh, Caprulu refraction. Um, he explains it all in his course. If you guys want the technical explanation, make sure you sign up to Florencio Science School for kids who can't macro good. Right now, guys, two fake Colossus are going to see the Vikings coming. He's got to get out of there, guys. Does he have recall? Oh, no, recall's not ready. Guys, recall's still seven seconds away. It's not ready, and the Vikings are here. Guys, you do not want to fight without the cannon battery. Oh, no, he's lost a Tempest. Another Tempest. They're getting one shot. Another Tempest. Recall's available, but he hasn't used it. Oh, no, he's getting slaughtered. Florencio did so well for so long, but Tempest cannot leave the safety of the cannon battery. Oh, man, he kills a few Vikings, but that's a great fight for the Terran. Helps tie up the units lost a little bit. You can see he's lost 11 Vikings for eight Tempests, but most of those Vikings died before that fight. Oh no, Florencio's got a Stalker and a Sentry right now. Two kills on the Sentry, one kill on the Stalker. What's he doing? He's building a Void Ray. He's building two Void Rays and two Zealots. His Cyber Core's not rebuilt. He doesn't have Warp Gate. He has not a single upgrade. He's going to try and take the top base. But dude, he's in such a bad spot. These Vikings might be able to go kill him right now. The Terran player though, his production is still stuck in the main. So he can't get out of his main base, right? 
Uh, especially, I mean, he has a medevac, so he could he could ferry them out. But he's going to go out and start clearing these pylons now. Florencio, he's just got, like, what, a Void Ray, another Void Ray, a Stalker, a Sentry, some slow Zealots building. This is terrible. Florencio's in a big spot of bother right now, and he's trying to gather up his units, but the Terran has much better army. Now, the Terran has not found his mining bases. He's got Vikings Base looking. He might start to realize that Florencio is in this top right of the map soon enough, though, as this Viking hunts down all over the shop. Does ferry two cyclones to the outside as well. That medevac doing a great job. Only 11 SCVs for the Terran and no gas mining and not rebuilding SCVs. So at this point, the spirit of Terran is saying, hey, I killed your Tempest. You're, you, I don't think you have an expansion. Like, I should just be able to win with these units, right? He's going around and checking though, and he's going to be very upset when he finds this base with cannons support as well in the top of the map. And he's going he's, there. He's, he's heading in. He finds a, a Stalker out in the open. It goes down almost instantly. A quick recall, snap recall there for Florencio. That is a fake Colossus, remember. Uh, but he doesn't know that. Viking does go down. Three Void Rays, a Zealot, a Stalker, Sentry, and a fake Colossus. Shield batteries are going down. Cyclone and a Marine rally in. And, uh, you know, what are you doing, man? That's not. It's, it's going to take forever to drain those shield batteries of energy. He is rebuilding SCVs now. He's going to need to rebuild the gas as well so we can keep up the tech unit production. Still, unupgraded Stalkers is all it's building. I, I do think... That the Spirit of Terran, simply by building good units, could win this game. He's got enough Vikings and Cyclones to deal with the Void Rays, but the Stalkers and the Zealots coming in on the ground could complicate things since he doesn't have that many Marines. Still looks like a better army for Spirit of Terran right now, especially with those Cyclone lock-ons. Taking out two Stalkers almost instantly for one Marine. And, oh, that Sentry's going to go down as well. Yes, it is. It goes down. But the Void Ray is looking for a counterattack. Florencio, look at this. The distraction stalker comes in and says, Hello, distraction. Meanwhile, the Cyclone does spot it, takes out one of these Void Rays, but the Void Rays are there. Nonetheless, the army frantically trying to run back to this base. Remember, he's only got 17 SCVs. The Spirit of Terran is going to be in trouble if he doesn't stop this. Oh, the Cyclones can't get in. He kills the rocks. Come on, Cyclones. Come on. The Void Rays are going to turn and fight. They take out one Void Ray. Can they take out two Cyclones? Two Cyclones go down. He gets a third Cyclone. Three Cyclones to three Void Rays. Eh, you're on 25 probes. He's on 16. This might actually be an okay trade. He's massing unupgraded Stalkers right now. Uh, extra Barracks and Command Center is going down. Looks like this Command Center has started mining the gases in the main again. So so actually, Spirit of Terran has his gas mining up. He's still kept a alive. Barracks Starport Factory in the main. Florencio is going to try and drop a Twilight Council. He's thinking about getting maybe Blink here. At the, it's the 17 minute Blink transition. Okay. Used to be 17 minute unupgraded Stalker transition off no warp gate. I guess he's kind of doing that, but he's going to add Blink as well. The modern Florencio does like that Blink upgrade. Uh, one of the, the least efficient units unless you micro it like a god. And Florencio says, oh, I can micro like a god. <laughs> um, I'm not sure exactly which god he, he kind of says, you know, which one he intends when he says that. Because... I feel a little bit more like it's watching, maybe not like Corn, you know, the, the the god of war. I'm thinking more like Nurgle. It's kind of like watching just a big old festering carcass with open sores and maggots and things writhing out of it, you know? It's it's not really just a giant eight foot tall bloody barbarian warrior type creature, is it? Stalker's coming forward. The Cyclone is going to take out a Stalker. Gets back for a moment. That Cyclone is so low on one hit point. The tanks scaring off these units. Landed Vikings are kind of like marauders. They're not too bad versus stalkers at all. And what's Florencio going to do? He's just building more stalkers, building an oracle right now. This is his only mining base. The Terran, 21 SCVs. If he can lift this command center, just float down here, I guess. Maybe over here would be good. Uh, he can protect that. The stalkers are doing a bit of a run by... Oh no, the medevac. Dude, pull it back. Oh my God, he just threw his medevac away. Come on, mate. Way too close. Standing that in cannon range. Getting a bit confused by the perspective issue, I think. Ah, that stalker runs in, almost dies, but Florencio says, See ya, don't want to be ya! Runs in! It's a run by, guys! One zealot, a bunch of stalkers. Oh, and he sets up a stasis trap behind you, cheeky little bugger! And that's out of vision as well. Oh, you shithead. Luckily for uh, Pride of Terran, Spirit of Terran, some of his units are spread out, so he will set it off there. Only traps a few of the units, but already he's lost every single SCV in this base. And the command center as well! Oh my god, Florencio, you absolute bag of dicks. He comes in, bag of dicks swinging, not big dick swinging, bag of dicks swinging. That's the way the Sewer Mermaid does it. And just bloody slaps down the economy. Pride of Terran has a tank slowly trying to break out of this. But once again, those shield batteries doing their work. Looks like he's going to get a cannon. The Stalker runs up and says, Hey, buddy. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. 
Maybe the tank's going to try and unsiege and get out of there. But the Stalkers are running in again. And they say, hey, guess what? We just killed the other base. Your army's out of position. Now we can run in and kill this base. There is a command center mining on the left. But this is so irritating. He's abusing recall so well. And this army cannot rotate back into this main. He can try to ferry units into the edge of the main. But he's already losing SCVs. The gas mining going down. One of the geysers is out. The other one almost out. He's lost the SCVs. Tanks, marine, cyclones. Going to try and fight this. Florencio probably could have taken that fight. But he runs away and says, that's fine. You're in the main. I'm going to run around to the left side. More Void Rays as well as Blink on the way. Void Ray, Blink Stalker, guys. One of the most solid compositions in the game. If by solid, you mean a two-flush corn log. That's what I'm talking about. This is literally, you should never build this in any scenario. Florencio's like, I'm going to win with it anyway, though, because my name's Florencio. That being said, I say win with it. I haven't watched this game. He very well could lose this game. <laughs> I've seen him throw games before with Stalkers. We've seen it recently versus Zerg. I think he's got enough of an... I mean, I keep saying economic advantage, but is it really, guys? It's not. I mean, look at the income advantage. The income advantage is actually quite clearly in the favor of uh, of the Terran right now because he's got mules and two commands and it's just been the same probes from the very early game. He's going to take another expansion, but it's the same 25 probes from the start of the game. Oh, that's a good move. The Void Rays get the tank. The Cyclone's going to get out of there, but the Stalker Void Ray can bust the production and all he's got is one barracks on the left. He's making stim, but he doesn't have that many Marines. Losing the barracks with the reactor, crucial. The command center is going to try to get out of there, but that's a lot of things that shoot up. Those SCVs unable to escape. The siege tank dies as it pops. Command Center will go down next as well. You can see just how massive the damage is from that army. 14 Blink Stalkers, 4 Void Rays. And all these depots are juicy targets. Florencio, please kill the depots, mate. And he's going to do it. Yeah, that's massive damage. The Terran player is going to have to rebuild his depots from scratch. It's a disaster. And all of one base of workers, guys. 21 minutes, one base of workers, all you need. Now, a Cyclone can kill a full Nexus with three lock-ons. Each lock-on is 14 seconds. That's going to take 42 seconds for a Cyclone to kill a full Nexus. Uh, maybe a little bit less, more like 38, since the third lock-on doesn't need to complete its damage. You only need about half of the damage off that third one. Unfortunately, it's not going to be in time. The recall comes in. The Cyclone gets diddled. And just leaves one depot there. He says, tell anyone else who comes here what I did to you. Actually, on second... Th no, no, we, we will just... Uh, we will burn you down. The uh, little Terrans that live inside this little Terran house. Ah, my home. Um, because there's families that live in the depots. The supply... The military supply depots have families. There's like kids in there sitting around a campfire. It's a whole thing. Don't worry, guys. The lore in Starcraft doesn't make that much sense. Shh. Double Tempest is on the way. We're going to go for the second Twilight Council here, guys, because the first one wasn't good enough. Uh, yep, Florencio, doing Florencio things. This Nexus is actually going to go down. The Stimmarines and the Vikings, but the Stalkers are on the hunt. Guys, you can't run away from Blink Stalkers very well. They're very quick. You might try and just land. But if he lands the Vikings, he can't deal with the Void Rays. Oh, he's getting hunted down. Florencio can absolutely chase this. He pauses there to make sure he doesn't get ambushed on the ramp. And he blinks forward. He says, YOLO, mate. You're going, you're going to get hunted down. The gold base gets found as well. And these Marines are so damaged. He's got to abandon ship. You can't stand and fight. The Void Rays are on top of the Vikings. That's never good for Vikings. Vikings only beat Void Rays if they run away, shoot, run away, shoot. But with the Stalkers chasing after them, that's not really an option. And Florencio, with a resounding thwunk, slaps his bomby knocker, or in this case, his excrement knocker, over the Spirit of Terran's face and gives him a nasty, nasty time. Guys, Florencio lost seven probes in the making of this game. You're still on 24 probes at the end. That's right, 23 minute game, 31 probes built in the entire duration, only ever mining from one base at a time. What an absolute Chad gamer. Well played, mate. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the Florencio Files, everybody. A special thanks to Modern Totem, Max and Colonel SC, Jacob G, for supporting us on the Patreon, as well as everyone else whose name's here and anyone who supported past, present, or future. If you guys want to help with the Patreon, info's down below. And a special thanks to Modern Totem, who has, of course, impregnated our channel because he's a goddamn Leviathan. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye and good night.